Hello, and happy White Day! So on Valentine's Day, I gave you all this brand new channel. And today, for White Day, we're going to be doing this special playthrough of how to date a magical girl. Welcome! Before we begin, we need to find out more about you. Please answer the following questions truthfully. Question 1. What do you look like? Um, I don't look like either of those, so I can't answer this um, truthfully. But let's just go with this guy here. I see. So you look like this? We'll say yes. Very good. Shall we continue? Oh, we shall continue. Sorry. Question two. What is your name? No, my name's not Yuki. I'm not Snow. Yuki is Snow, right? Anyone with better Japanese, please uh, feel free to correct me. Um, that's what I get for typing while I'm talking. No, our name is Gi. Oh, enter to confirm. Sorry. I see. So your name is Gi. Yes. I need to confirm all the answers you've given me. Your name is Gi and you look like this. That's what I'm going with. Very well. Thank you for providing this information. You may begin. Well, thank you, game. Today is a wondrous day. It's a day I've dreamt about for nearly three months. A day that surely, that I surely thought would never arrive. All the blood, sweat, and tears I've shed these past months have led me to this very point in time. The perfect moment, the very point of my entire existence. I now hold in my position, possession, the Holy Grail an object of such great value and importance that it would spell disaster if it fell into the wrong hands. It rests heavily in my palm, seeming to pulsate with life. The inconspicuous brown paper bag covering it does little to mask its holy aura. As I gaze upon this most sacred of objects, I make a solemn vow to myself. I promise to guard this object until the day I die. Dot dot dot. For now, it's time to view the object's full, magnificent splendor. I unwrap the brown paper bag and am nearly blinded by the light emanating from within. Finally, I now hold the uncovered object in all of its radiant glory. It's the limited edition special cover version of volume 35 of my all-time favorite Magical Girl manga series. Yes! Finally! I waited for three months after this volume was announced for today, the release day. I found myself shedding a single I find myself shedding a single tear of joy as I bask in the beauty of the limited edition cover. With only 100 of these printed, I am truly one of the luckiest people alive. I have been following this series since I was an impudent child. I have grown alongside it, chanting the heroine's name in my sleep night after night. And now, the very last volume has arrived. Years of worship have guided me here. Today, the series is complete. I'll return home and read this most valued tome and achieve true nirvana. Reading this series over the years has been an uphill battle. My friends often mocked me for following a children's manga series, but they just didn't see the beauty of it. They couldn't possibly fathom the rich, intricate history of the world, the heroine's ambitions and motives, the ever-present darkness threatening to engulf the world. If they truly wanted to believe this is a, child, a children's manga, that's their right, but I wouldn't be swayed by their narrow-minded opinions. I feel myself trembling in anticipation as my fingers reach forward to open the cover. No, I must be patient. I need to return home first, before I dive into this adventure. I just can't keep my eyes off the beautiful cover. This walk home will truly be a test of my inner strength and willpower. I should power walk towards my house. The quicker I get home, the quicker I can begin reading. 
Excellent idea. The journey speeds along at a rapid pace. I don't even have to take my eyes off the manga. I know this route so well. Just a few more blocks to go. Initializing world. I feel like I've wasted most of spring, lazing away with nothing to do. I can't even remember the majority of it. The days just passed like a blur, every day the same as the last. At the very least, Hikari came to visit me some days. At least, I think she did. I don't remember if she ever stayed long, or if we talked much. Still, it was a nice thing for her to do. This week has been unusually hot for the season. I think the heat has been scrambling my brains like eggs on a fry pan. I've been finding it so hard to focus lately, to concentrate on anything at all. I know I should perk up a little, try and get some things done before the season ends. But then again, it's just so easy to lay here on the grass without a care in the world. I wonder how much longer I can go on like this. Everything changed on that fateful day, two years ago, that day I picked up the final volume of my favorite Magical Girl manga series. I read it cover to cover, and when I finished, reality began to sink in. The story was over. The story I had been following for nearly my entire life was just finished. Since that day, I have felt so very, very lost. My appetite disappeared. I stopped hanging out with friends. I dropped all my hobbies. Dude, it's just a manga. Oh, I mean, I understand, like, being, like, sad when something that you love is finished. But, dude, find a new manga. Maybe that artist has other things you can check out. Um, reread the manga a few times if you want. Um, I don't know, learn how to animate, and if you truly love this manga so much, turn it into an anime. I don't know. I mean, your life doesn't need to end just because your manga is over. And who knows? Maybe, a few years down the line, there'll be a magical girl uh, next generation manga. Who knows? The days went by in a haze, and looking back, I can't remember a single moment with any kind of clarity. It's sad, but that's the truth of it. I can try and blame the recent heat as much as I want, but really, I've been feeling like this for a few seasons now. And also, at least the manga got finished. You know what's worse is when you're reading something, and then the author either just, like, stops, I mean, that happened with my favorite manga. The um, author's uh, health, she, she had some health issues, and so she never finished the manga, which was really frustrating, because it was a huge cliffhanger on where it left off. <sighs> but that's how it goes sometimes. Or heck, I mean, one of my novel, favorite novel series, the author died, fortunately, before he finished. Fortunately, he had copious notes, and they found someone who did a decent job finishing it out for him. And then my other favorite novel series, the author seems to be too concerned with writing prequels and such, and so it looks like he's never going to finish it. And I know he doesn't like people commenting about how he's probably going to die before he finishes it, but when you're that old, that's a realistic thing. Just like I'm on the old side myself, who knows, maybe I'm going to die before I finish any of the games I've started on this channel. And wow, I can't believe I'm going off on this rant like this. Um, apparently White Day is just making me feel things. Um, 
So yeah, let's continue on with this. I'll try not to go on too many tangents. I need to pick myself up. Same. If I don't get a grip, I'm going to throw away my entire future. I need to get my head back in the game. I need to pull it together before tomorrow. Tomorrow, the first day at my new school. It's kind of hard to believe, even though I graduated high school, someone decided for me that my studies should continue. I assume that someone was Hikari. She's always meddling in my business. I suppose it's her way of looking after me. Before I knew it, I was enrolled in a new academy without so much as my nod of approval. Classes start tomorrow, whether I'm ready or not. As for the academy itself, I can't say I know much about it. There was a brochure in my letterbox at one point, but that promptly fell into the recycling can. I remember it had a lot of smiling faces on it, probably just typical propaganda. I don't even know what kind of classes I'll be attending. It could be anything considering Hikari's eclectic tastes. She probably signed me up for a cooking class, or horseback riding, or advanced basket weaving. Who knows? Have you taken basic basket weaving? Because, I mean, it'd be weird to sign you up for advanced, if you're not already um, familiar with the basics of basket weaving. I'm beginning to doze off in the warm afternoon sun. Just before my awareness slips away completely, a shadow falls across my face. Hmm. Someone is suddenly standing over me. I squint, trying to make out their features. It's time to wake up now, Guy. What are you lying around here for? It's far too hot. You're going to cook. I shoot the girl a dirty look, as if accusing her for interrupting my rest. Dick. It takes me another couple of seconds to recognize the girl. Blame my foggy mind. Wait, is it foggy or scrambled? Make up your mind, Guy. Oh, it's you, Hikari. Geez, is that what passes for a greeting these days? Sorry, I was just lost in thought. Hmm. Well, it's my fault for expecting you to treat me with a little respect. I said I'm sorry. Fine, fine. This intrusive girl is none other than Hikari, one of my oldest friends. She's kind of cute in her own way. Dude, have you seen the artwork? She's more than kind of cute in her own way, you guess. I've known her for such a long time that I can't imagine her as anything other than just a friend. Though I wonder if she feels the same way about me. Yeah. I wonder what it's like to be the kind of guy that can be like that. I mean, if I was friends with a girl for a very long time, odds are I'd probably have romantic feelings for them. Now, they're, they're usually just kind of like in the background and just like pushed aside because it's like, yeah, I'm not going to like ruin friendships just because I have a little crush on someone, but okay. Once again, tangent, sorry. Hikari is the kind of girl that shoots first and asks questions later, but that's probably due to her being overprotective rather than assertive. It's the reason I assume she is the one who enrolled me at the new academy. I don't know anyone else who cares about my future like she does. When we were younger, she had a habit of following me around everywhere, kind of like a little sister. As we grew older, this habit evolved into meddling in my business and stealing my lunch every day. It probably sounds like I'm complaining, but I'm honestly not. Hikari is a great person and I'm truly lucky to have a friend like her. I just don't really understand what she sees in me or what she gets out of our relationship. Anyway, what are you doing out here? Do you have any idea how long it took me to find you? I'm just relaxing. What's the big deal? Relaxing? You don't do anything but relax. You're aware we're starting school tomorrow, right? Yep. Painfully aware. Wait, you said we're 
As in we? Are you attending class with me, Hikari? Oh, give me a break. I explained this to you at least six and a half times. I swear, talking to you is like talking to a brick wall. Except the brick wall is better looking than you are. Hey, I object to that. Look, look, we're going to the academy together, and that's final. You don't have a say in the matter, okay? Okay, please don't hurt me. I wouldn't dream of hurting you. Um, I have a question, though. What kind of classes are we taking? A thoughtful expression crosses Hikari's features. I can tell she's making up her mind on whether to scold me or give me a proper answer. Well, if you... If you'd read the guide I left you at your house, here we go, you'd already know that we'll be taking basic first year classes, nothing too difficult I'd imagine. They, they know you're a noob, so you shouldn't have any problems. Somehow being called a noob hurts more than anything else Hikari could have, could have come up with. Aren't you a noob as well, Hikari? She looks taken aback, almost as offended as I got just so. Almost as offended as I got just seconds ago. Well, no, I'm not new to this. You know I've been practicing for years. Practicing? What is she talking about? I'm confused. What have you been practicing? A frown crosses Hikari's face. I know this expression well. It's her, I'm so tired of your clueless ass face. I've been practicing to become a fully-fledged magical girl, of course. Her words hit me like a truck. Did she just say magical girl? Somehow the stupor I've been living in for endless months shatters in an instant. I feel like my eyes have opened for the first time in a long time. I see Hikari's small, smiling face beaming at me, as if she's so very proud of what she just said. Of course, of course, I remember that Hikari is training to become a magical girl. How could I let such a magnificent fact elude me for so long? I've known as much for years. It just never really registered, I guess. So if I put two and two together, I'd say the academy we're attending for from tomorrow is a school for magical girls. But why am I going? I have no magical talent whatsoever. Heck, I'm pretty sure I'm not even a girl. Hehe, <laughs> you look just like an ice cold shower, Gee. Oh, you look. You look like you just took an ice cold shower, Guy. Is everything okay? Yes, he looks like an ice cold shower. I think about her question for a moment. I do feel more alert now. It's a familiar feeling. It's almost the way I felt before, back before my favorite manga series finished. The truth is, magical girls are very, very real. The whole time I had my head buried in manga, real life magical girls existed all around me. I think I was just too nervous to ever go out and meet them. Except for Hikari. I knew her before she ever awakened her to her powers. I can't quite explain why I've let my mind stay so foggy these last few years. But maybe now, with school starting tomorrow, I can begin to work towards becoming a functioning human being again. I give Hikari a slight smile. Hikari, why am I going to a school for magical girls? Hikari shuffles on the spot. She seems hesitant to tell me. The truth is... About a month ago, you and I were having dinner. And all of a sudden, your powers awoke. What? I noticed it immediately, but you seemed like your old oblivious self and barely paid attention to what happened. So, what did happen? Like I said, we were having dinner together. I accidentally knocked a glass of water off the table. It was going to shatter on my bare feet, and I screamed, afraid of cutting myself on the glass. It happened so quickly I couldn't move away in time. And you, you kind of just glanced at the glass, and it stopped, mid-air, frozen in time. I mean, literally frozen in time, ice and all. I don't believe you. I would remember something like that. You just shrugged and continued eating. 
ellipses. I think at the time you just believed I had made the glass freeze in place. After all, you've known about my magical powers for a long time. I awoke to my powers when I was 13, maybe 14, I don't quite remember, but still. I have a very specific set of powers, and don't forget, I'm untrained. There's no way I could freeze something in time. So after that night, I replayed the event back in my mind, over and over. The only explanation is that you froze the glass. You suddenly awoke to your own powers and saved me from getting cut on broken glass. So what you're saying is... I'm a hero? Bleh, not quite, Guy. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I never enrolled us to attend the academy. We were both sent letters from the association. They can detect who has magical powers and who doesn't, you know. They keep a record of everyone. According to the association, once magical girls reach 18 years of age, it's the law for them to attend the academy. The letter basically demanded we attend the academy effective immediately. But I'm a boy. I can't go to an all-girls school. Yes, well, I can't explain it. Boys don't ever awaken to magic powers. You might be some new phenomenon. Because you awaken to your powers. Right on the age of 18, you get the joy of going back to school. I mean, you could be trans, I guess. I mean, I don't know. <clears throat> Regardless, we both start class tomorrow. We'll both be training to become magic magical girls. Or a magical boy in my case, apparently. All of this information is swirling around my head like a tornado. I feel simultaneously excited and exhausted. Do I really have magical powers? Can I actually freeze things in time? I can't think of any other situation where I've done such a thing, and I have no clue how to make it happen again. Well, I suppose that's the point of the academy. They should train me to reach my full potential, right? I guess attending class with Hikari won't be so bad. Maybe I'll make some new friends, too. What do you say we get out of here? We can grab some dinner and celebrate our last night of freedom. Sounds good to me. You're paying, though. I am not, you big lug. You can pay for both of us. Hey, dinner was your idea, not mine. Why should I pay? You're just as hopeless as always. How did I get dragged into going back to school with you? You love it. Ah ha ha, let's see how many classes we can make it through before I strangle you out of frustration. Four fifteen Sunday, four sixteen Monday. Shut up. Ugh, please, for the love of all that is holy, shut up. I begrudgingly open my eyes and am greeted by the sight of my alarm clock having a seizure on the floor. The glowing red numbers taunt my blurry vision by fading in and out at full speed. I groan and rub my eyes, trying to clear my vision. Finally, I can make out the numbers on the clock clearly. 8.02 a.m. I yawn. <laughs> Thankfully, it's still early. I've got nothing to do today except eat leftovers, so why did I set my alarm for such an early time? 8.03 a.m. I smack my lips at the thought of the cold Chinese takeout waiting for me in the refrigerator. 8.04 a.m. I stifle a yawn. Some distant thought is tugging at the back of my mind. Have I forgotten something important about today? Did I have something more serious to do than eat leftovers? 8.05 a.m. Nah, impossible. There's nothing, Im nothing important going on in my life right now. Maybe Hikari said she'll visit today, or something small like that. 8.06 a.m. Oh yeah, something is coming back to me. School? Am I supposed to go to school today? 8.07 a.m. I feel like a bucket of cold water has just splashed over my head. Suddenly wide awake, I realize that I've completely forgotten that today is my first day at the academy. Everything is coming back to me now, including the fact that Hikari told me first year orientation starts at 8.30 a.m. Sharp. Sharp! 
8.08 a.m. I can't be late for my first day at the academy. What will Hikari think of me? More importantly, what will the cute magical girls I've never met think of me? I leap out of bed like a frog launching from a lily pad. I immediately regret this action as I am tangled up in my blankets and they drag me down to the floor. I narrowly avoid hitting my head. I thank my lucky stars that I didn't get hurt before frantically scrambling to my feet. I dash out of my room and into the kitchen. I open the fridge and am greeted by the wafting aroma of cold, sweet and sour pork leftovers. I grab the container unceremoniously and launch it across the kitchen, cheering when it lands in the open microwave. <laughs> I dash to the microwave and mash the keypad blindly. The light flickers to life and the machine starts up with a splutter and a hum. While my excellent choice of breakfast is being cooked to perfection, I decide to get dressed. When I reach my closet, I come to the sinking realization I don't have an academy uniform yet. I leave open the doors with a sigh, only to be greeted by the sight of an unfamiliar dry cleaning bag on the coat hanger. With a confused frown, I pull the bag down and find a note written on the front in cute handwriting. I went to the trouble of picking up your new uniform for you. You owe me one, Hikari. Oh, that Hikari, she thinks of everything. I tear into the dry cleaning bag and pull out the brand new uniform. I'm in the middle of climbing into my new threads, just as an angry cacophony of beeps and boops calls to me from the kitchen. Breakfast is ready! I finish donning my amazing new outfit and rock it into the kitchen to throw food into my gullet. My breakfast is demolished in a new personal record of 12.74 seconds, and then I'm out the door in a flash. I hardly even know where I'm going, but I recall Hikari saying the academy is walking distance from my home. It's not hard to find a map on my phone, so I load that up and begin my hurried walk. A little time passes. It's 8.24 a.m. Can I make it in time? The map on my phone tells me I'll arrive in 8 minutes. I'll be a little late, but a couple of minutes never hurt anyone, right? I wonder if Hikari will be there to greet me at the school gate. It would be nice to see a familiar face after this whirlwind of a morning. My power walk evolves into a jog when I see the school gates looming in the distance. I can't believe it. I'm actually going to make it. There's a few other straggling students making their way into the school. They're all wearing the academy's uniform, including its signature pastel yellow vest. I notice that all the other students are female. I suppose that's not too surprising. This is a school for magical girls, after all. Still, it's the first time I'm witnessing such a thing. I finally reach the school gates. When I peer beyond them, I can see the other students entering what looks to be the school hall. I suppose that's where orientation is being held. I glance around to see if Hikari is here. No luck, though. Maybe she's waiting for me inside the hall. I break into a run toward the school hall, sprinting as fast as my unfit legs can carry me. I weave in and around the other students, also making a mad dash forward. I'm nearly there. I can almost taste my fashionably late entrance. My foot snags on another student's shoe. Guess I wasn't quick enough to get out of their way. I don't even have time to let out a gasp as I fall flat on my face on the pavement. Ellipses. I... I was so close. I nearly made it. Now I'm just lying on the ground, face down, like an idiot. A little squeal erupts from in front of me. My first thought is that maybe I squashed a, some small, cute animal when I fell, like a kitten or a squirrel that can squeal. I push myself off the ground and am greeted by an unexpected sight. A cute girl wearing glasses has fallen on the ground in front of me. She looks to be about my age, so I assume she's a first year student as well. She is trying and failing to cover up her panties, which I believe the entire world can now see. Eek! Don't look! I bashfully turn my head away, for at least for it I bashfully turn my head away for at least a second. Then I turn back to her. S stop look stop it stop looking you you're you're a boy why are you here this is a school for magical girls i know i know it's a long story but i'm a student here i'm sorry i think i knocked you over no no 
I think it was my fault. I was in a rush and wasn't looking where I was going. Are you hurt? No, I'm okay. The girl is still trying to adjust her skirt so that she can rescue her dignity. Um, are we really late for orientation? Yeah, I think so. That's terrible. I promised myself I would make it on time. I can't believe I slept in. I'm a stupid, stupid girl. Hey now, don't beat yourself up. I slept in too. You, you don't understand. I only slept in because I went to bed at 3 a.m., even though I promised myself I wouldn't stay up so late. The girl sure seems interesting. Wonder what could have caused her to stay up so late, the day before school starts. Er, why were you up until 3 a.m.? That's, that's too embarrassing to answer. Come on now, you can tell me. It's not like we're strangers. I mean, I've seen... <laughs> yeah, don't say it! Oops. Fine, I'll tell you why I was up so late. I was watching films. Films, huh? I wonder what kind of films. It's not my fault that I have trouble going to bed after watching horror movies. I start to see shadows lurking in every corner, and I get too scared to even try to sleep. I don't expect someone like you to know what it's like. To become so engrossed in a tale of the macabre that all the hairs on your body stand on end. To be frightened senseless the slightest strange sound from within your own home. Until you're experienced until you've experienced that kind of paralyzing terror, you'll never understand the joy of cult horror films. The girl is breathing heavily, obviously exhausted from her passionate outburst. I think she may have a screw loose. You haven't lived until you've seen a film that makes your toes curl, chills your bones, and gives you goosebumps all at the same time. Yeah, unfortunately I have read Dune, so I'm quite aware that fear is the mind killer. And I don't really let it affect me like that, so there we go. Um, I'll take your word for it. So this girl likes to scare herself senseless, and then she wonders why she can't get to sleep at a decent hour. So, um, you still haven't covered up your, you know. The girl squeals again in embarrassment. I'd feel sorry for her if the view wasn't in my favor. You fucking perv. Stop! Stop looking! Sorry. Are you really, Guy? Why am I cursed with such bad luck? How can something so embarrassing happen on the first day of school? I suppose I understand why she's so distressed. Maybe I should say something to calm her down. Um, by the way, what's your name? My name? Yeah. Is that such an unusual question? Oh my god, stop being a dick. No, I suppose not. My name is Yui. Yui Akiyama. Hey, Yui Kazami. Um, pleased to meet you, I guess. It's nice to meet you, too. No, it's nice to meet you, Yui. My name is Gi. Oh my god, why, why are the protagonists in these games almost always pervs and or dicks? It's really frustrating. I'm not sure how much of this playthrough I'm going to be able to get through. Um, yeah. But I get to my feet and dust myself off. I reach a hand out to Yui. Here, I'll help you up. I swear that Yui blushes for a second before grabbing my hand. Her fingers are soft and delicate, warm. She grips my hand ever so lightly, and I manage to lift her to her feet. Thank, thank you. Oh, that's why that name seems familiar. Um, the lady that did the um, opening for um, Full Metal Alchemist uh, Brotherhood, I think, is also called Yui. Yeah, she has some really good stuff. I'm sorry we had to meet under such distressing circumstances. Don't sweat it. I'm just happy to have met you at all. The soft red blush returns to her cheeks and she looks away shyly. We should go. Yeah. Without another word, Yui takes the lead and walks in front of me. I follow behind her obediently. Obediently? Okay.
We make our way to the entrance of the school hall. The big wooden doors are closed, barring our way forward. Yui tries pulling the handle. The door is stuck fast. She frowns, then changes tactics, pushing the door instead. Still no luck. The door is securely locked. Do they really lock out latecomers? I guess so. Oh no, oh no, are we going to be punished for missing orientation? I don't think I can handle detention. Calm down, calm down, I'm sure we're not going to be punished. We'll just have to wait here until orientation ends, I suppose. I give Yui a shrug, and we wait around for the students to leave the hall. We'll surely run into Hikari. Hikari will know what to do, she always does. In the meantime, why don't we get to know each other? Yui doesn't say anything, a downtrodden expression has etched itself onto her features. She leans against the wall and lets out a sigh. Um, so... Um, so, do you know any magic? Either she doesn't hear me, or she's choosing to ignore me now. Her eyes are closed as though she's trying to block out the world around her. Well, not much I can do, I suppose. I slump down and sit on the ground. I have no idea how long orientation goes for. Or how long we'll be waiting around here. A bell rings. Finally, orientation is finished. The doors of the school hall swing wide open and a flood of students leak out of the building. There must be hundreds of girls all scurrying forward. As they exit the hall, they split into different directions, surely heading towards their first classes for the day. If only I knew what my classes were, I could head towards where I'm supposed to go. But I've no clue what I'm doing here. I need to find Hikari. I stand to the side as all the students tumble out of the hall. I lose sight of Yui on the other side of the crowd. Oh well, she stopped talking to me anyway. Not my fault. I desperately try to catch a glimpse of Hikari's fam familiar face in the crowd. It doesn't help that she's shorter than most of the other students so she'll likely be lost in the group. I suddenly feel a tap on my shoulder. I turn around. You idiot! How could you miss orientation? I was waiting inside the hall for you, and then they locked the doors and I had to sit by myself. Hikari, I'm sorry. I don't want to hear it. You let me down, Gi. You're going to make this up to me. I will, I will. I'm really sorry. What happened anyway? Did you sleep in? Well, yeah, I did, but I actually got here at a decent time. The problem is, I knocked another girl over, and we got caught up talking. Another girl? Yeah, actually. Because the crowd has thinned out, I can see Yui standing awkwardly by the doors. It was that girl over there. Hikari looks toward Yui, standing all alone. I see. Is she a first year as well? She looks lost. Yeah, I think so. Since we got locked outside, we weren't sure what to do, or where to go. I was kind of kind of hoping you could help us, Hikari. Hikari almost looks sad, just for a moment, but then a bright smile flashes across her face. I'm always happy to help. Now that orientation is over, we have to go to our homeroom and meet our teacher. I can lead the way. Hikari begins to skip away. I grab Yui's attention with a wave and beckon her towards us. What? What is it? We can go to homeroom and meet our teacher now. Do you want to follow us? Yeah, okay, thanks. But what if she's not in the same homeroom? With that, the three of us make our way to the classroom. The classroom is noisy. There must be 30 students packed in, chatting away and waiting for the teacher to arrive. Hikari managed to find seats for myself and Yui, all lined up next to each other. Not a bad arrangement, if I do say so myself. I glance around the room. It all feels very familiar, just like high school all over again. The students are even in cliques, and it's only the very first day. There's a group of sporty looking girls at the back of the class. One of them is bouncing a basketball for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why she brought that to the academy, maybe just to reinforce her clique stereotype? At the front of the class are the bookworms. They're shy, speaking only in whispers and glancing nervously at the other students. Hanging out by the classroom door are the rebellious girls. A few of them have streaks of neon color dyed in their hair. Their uniforms are untidy and a few have cut off their sleeves. And here in the middle of the class are Hikari, Yui, and myself. 
Hikari and I go way back, of course. I've just met Yui. As for Hikari and Yui's relationship, I don't think they've spoken a single word to each other. Well, they literally just... You haven't even given them... You haven't even introduced them to each other yet, dude. Will they become friends? Time will tell. The clamor of voices quiets down as the classroom door opens and a woman enters. She makes her way to the front of the class, offers a smile, and begins her speech. Good morning, class. I'm your homeroom teacher, Miss Otsuka, but you can all call me by my first name, Satomi. You'll find that I'm very in that I'm a very informal teacher, unlike any teacher you've had during your school years, for sure. It's my hope that we'll all become friends during your first year here at the Academy. I hope that we can build a relationship that carries on long after you graduate. This new teacher, Satomi, seems really nice. I can't really pick out one defining feature of this new teacher. Nope. I'd have to pick two. She has two very large, very defining features. On a less shallow note, I guess she has an inviting smile. Overall, she's definitely not bad for an older woman. He seems to have captured the class's attention. Even the rebellious girls have taken a seat to show their respect. I'm sure you all have a million questions burning in your brains, especially after orientation. Rest assured, I am here to help every one of you achieve your goals and get good grades during the year. As your homeroom teacher, I'll offer you support and guidance. If you need assistance with any of your subjects, you can always come to me. Satomi claps her hands together and beams. Now then, with all that out of the way, as she takes a step forward, her elbow knocks a stack of papers off her desk. Important looking documents scatter all over the floor. The class gasps, then falls silent, waiting to see how she reacts to the mess she just made. Oops. Satomi's face turns bright red and she bends down to pick up some of the papers. She lowers herself and a loud thud echoes through the classroom as her head slams into the corner of her desk. The class gasps once more, then silence. Ouch! Ah! Uh. I hear a slight giggle from Yui seated next to me. Boom! She obviously thinks this whole affair is pretty funny. A few girls rush up to the front of the class to help the teacher pick up her papers. When Satomi stands up, I can make out the faint purple outline of a bruise forming on her forehead. Dang, that sucks. After two clumsy failures, Satomi hasn't exactly managed to maintain her composure. She's glowing red, and a bead of embarrassed sweat trickles down her face. Um, class, if you could all just ignore that little spectacle, I would greatly appreciate it. Ah ha ha. A few students giggle quietly. Satomi does her best to continue with her speech. Somehow, she hasn't entirely lost the class's respect, which is admirable. Okay, class, where was I? Oh, yes. For our first piece of business today, I'll be covering the subjects you'll be learning this year. Let's begin. There are three core subjects you must all attend in order to progress at the academy. These subjects are magical history, practical magic, and alchemy. Any other subjects you choose to undertake at the academy are optional, but will provide credits towards your overall degree. In magical history class, you'll learn all about the origins of magical girls that have become commonplace in our world. You'll discover how they came into being and their importance in our modern society. In practical magical class, you'll undertake rig rigorous magical training to hone your minds and bodies. You'll learn spells and abilities that are essential for a magical girl to undertake her duties. Finally, in alchemy class, you'll become familiar with the art of crafting magical items. From magical swords and staves to potions and portals, this is where your creativity will be put to the test. Hmm, this all sounds pretty cool. I had no idea there was so much involved with becoming a magical girl. I hear the hurried scratching of a pen on paper and look to my left. Hikari is scribbling notes frantically her tongue sticking out of the side of her mouth as she concentrates. 
To my right, Yui is also taking notes, though she's decorated the page of her notebook with doodles of a wicked witch stirring a cauldron. Your time here at the Academy will be one of the most memorable experiences of your life. In fact, when you look back on these days, you may think it was all just a dream. That's how pleasant your days here will be. With that said, don't think you can just slack off. In order to graduate, you will need to put in a lot of hard work. Don't expect to excel at every class. All students are different, and you may find that what comes naturally to you is very difficult for someone else. Yeah, that's true in, like, any type of academic setting. Just for anyone listening. What Satomi is saying here, very important life lesson. Not just in academic settings, actually, like, any setting. If you're at a job, there may be certain tasks that you are, you just pick up and it's super easy for you that another coworker might struggle with, whereas they might be really good at things that give you trouble. We're all different. We all have different capabilities, aptitudes, skills, uh, talents, and whatnot. It's important to not let your classes and studying time dominate your life. Socialize, make friends, take the time to relax once in a while. I highly recommend joining a club when you get the chance. We host a variety of fun clubs that you can attend in your free time. Take part in activities and meet new people. Finally, to wrap up my little speech, I need to tell you what to expect at exam time. The Academy runs exams twice during the year. You can expect an exam each semester. The key attributes we assess you on are magic, alchemy, perception, and expertise. It's important to focus on raising these attributes during your study time. You can improve your attributes with theory or practice. There's no way to go. There's no wrong way to go. Reading books, taking time to study, practicing spells, or performing alchemy, all of these activities will help you improve your attributes. You may find that other activities outside of school also help you out. Be sure to explore and find out what works best for you. If your key attributes are high enough come exam time, you will no doubt perform very well. So long it, so as long as you work hard at improving yourself, you have no need to stress. Should you fail your exams? Well, let's not get into that today, okay? I'm sure you will all succeed with flying colors. Satomi smiles wild, widely at the class. Everyone seems to be in a good mood after hearing her passionate speech. I run through the subjects she talked about in my head. Magical history, practical magic, and alchemy. They all sound fairly interesting. I get the feeling I'll enjoy practical magic the most. After all, isn't that about casting spells and seeing real magic happen before your eyes? Satomi wraps up her little speech with a few heartfelt quotes from some famous magical girls. Or something along those lines. I started getting hungry, so I began to zone out. Before you know it, I'm being shuffled out of the classroom by Hikari. All the other students are leaving too, and Yui's following behind. Hikari pulls me aside in the corridor. Sogi, what did you think? Everything sounds so exciting, right? Er, yeah, I actually think I'll enjoy my time here. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I have a feeling we'll have most of our classes together, so we can always help each other out with our studies. I notice Yui standing off to the side of the corridor. She's glancing at her phone absentmindedly. I get the feeling she's not the not one to make friends easily, and she doesn't seem to know anyone at this school. Maybe I should make an, an effort and invite her to hang out with Hikari and myself. Well, you should make sure that's okay with Hikari first, because, yeah, it really sucks, like, hanging out with someone and then all of a sudden they just decide on their own you're also gonna hang out with another person but I'm super excited about magical history class I want to learn all about all the famous magical girls from history like Jeanne d'Arc and uh, Cleopatra Jeanne d'Arc was not a magical girl she was a traitor to the crown and she was a heretic all right. That part of France was part of the Angevin territory, and thus rightfully she was a subject of the King of England. 
But no, she goes and helps the Dauphin. She helped the Dauphin, the Dauphin, the Dauphin, wasn't it? Or was it the, um, the king? But either way, she helped the wrong side. Alright, enough about that. I let Hikari trail off as I wander over to Yui. Hey! Yui looks up from her phone, somewhat taken aback. I... I wasn't waiting around for you or anything like that. I just don't know anyone here. It's okay. Don't sweat it. Um, I'm sorry about running into you. You know, this morning. Yui almost gives me a smile. I don't know, it looks like she's smiling to me. It's okay. I'm glad I met at least one new person today. Me too. If you don't mind, you're more than welcome to hang out with myself and Hikari. Thank you. I'd, I'd like that. I'll feel more comfortable having a few friends around. Hikari stomps over to us in a huff. Yi, I was in the middle of talking to you and you just walked away. Who taught you to be so rude? It certainly wasn't me. Hey, sorry Hikari. Um, I figured I should properly introduce you, since we'll be taking classes together. Hikari, this is Yui, and Yui, this is my little friend Hikari. Your little friend? Is that all, is that all I am to you? <laughs> We've known each other for how many years now? The amount of disrespect I get from you is incredible. Whoa, whoa, I'm sorry, Hikari. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hmm. Yui, Hikari is my childhood friend. We've known each other forever. <laughs> it's nice to meet you, Hikari. Nice to meet you, too. Since we're all new here, we should all be friends. I will make it will make school more fun, right? Yeah, yeah. That sounds good, Gi. Yui then does something I didn't expect. She bows formally to Hikari. Hikari, I hope we can be good friends. Please take care of me. I'm taken aback by her formality and politeness. Even Hikari has a sharp, shocked look on her face and can only offer a stuttering reply. Thank you. I hope we can be good friends. Yui offers Hikari a warm smile, then blushes a little and goes back to burying her face in her phone. Guess she got a bit embarrassed. Hey, who wants to get something to eat? Gi is paying today. Hey! Hikari and Yui chuckle at my expense before dragging me out to lunch. And that's where we're going to call that for now. Um... Unfortunately, if I keep just talking straight through like this, I'm probably going to lose my voice uh, in a bit. And yeah, so I definitely need to stop for now. I'm not sure if I'm going to continue this or not. Um, yeah, I totally, I, I mean, I played this before once a long time ago, but I had totally forgotten how much of a knob the main character can be. And now I'm remembering that most dating sims like this are like that, which is really frustrating. So, possibly we'll get back to this. Possibly we won't. Hey, maybe we'll get back to this again on uh, March 14th next year. We'll just take, we'll, we'll just play through this over the years. All right, so this has been How to Date a Magical Girl. I've been some guy you've never heard of, playing as Gi. Pretty much our default uh, in self-insert name. And uh, feel free to give this video a like, a dislike, a comment, subscribe, ring the bell, you know the drill. Alright, take care, and have a wonderful day, and um, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled videos next time.